With training camp set to get started in about a couple of weeks, the Raptors have finally finalized their 20-man roster to take part in that camp. And the last man on the list was Reggie Perry. So in today's video, we're going to break down everything you need to know about the former Brooklyn Nets player. Let's get into it. Welcome NBA and Raptors fans to Amateur Sports. This is a channel where you get NBA content with a focus on the Toronto Raptors at least four days a week. That is Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. This is your Wednesday episode. Where we're talking about the new signing, Reggie Perry. So if you like what you see from today's video, you want more of myself talking about the NBA and the Raptors and videos and content just like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below to support to the channel on a road to 7,000 subscribers. As you can see, we're in a new setup for today. Uh, only thing that needs to change is the white curtains. I have black curtains on the way, but you know, new shit shelf same jersey new hats new microphone and a nice little microphone clip as well so we're going to be in here for the foreseeable future but black curtains it'll look a lot nicer i promise but let's get down to business for today's video we are talking about reggie perry the new man that the tron raptors have brought in for the training camp so if you don't know the nba rosters are finalized at 15 people and the raptors or any nba team are allowed to have 20 people take part in their training camp so for the final spot for training camp yesterday we learned that the Raptors signed Reggie Perry. He's former Brooklyn Nets player as well as a former Mississippi State player where he put up some good numbers. So in this video, we're going to go into a little bit of a background on the player and then we're going to dive into the deeper meaning behind the pickup like we normally do for players coming into the Toronto Raptors. So let's get started with it. So Reggie Perry played last season with the Brooklyn Nets and it came off the back of getting drafted 57th overall in the second round after a very, very nice second season in college. And without that very good second season, Reggie Perry probably wouldn't have been drafted to begin with. But, you know, it's the Toronto Raptors and when they sign a new player, I'm gonna give you a second to maybe guess what his height and his wingspan is because, well, let's just take a look here. Masai Ujiri, Bobby West are the Raptors front office. They have a type. They have a type, absolutely. And their type is those two-way guys who have the athleticism, they have the height and the wingspan because at 21 years old, Reggie Perry has a six foot nine height and a seven foot one wingspan. He, I mean, he fits the Raptors to a T. If you told me the Raptors signed somebody yesterday and you didn't tell me who it was, I would just immediately say, oh, is he six foot eight, six foot nine with a seven, one, seven, two wingspan? And that's what we have here in Reggie Perry but he's not quite as much of that you know really good two-way guy I mean he is good in the two-way but he's not like that slasher he's not that the super athletic guy he is more of the in the low post type of guy he is more of a power forward and with the Brooklyn Nets having a lot of front court problems last year then in the front court he had to play at center sometimes but traditionally this is more of a power forward type of player a good body to have down low and we're just kind of seeing what we can get out of the player here because the Brooklyn Nets with so many players going into the team they just didn't have the space to keep on Reggie Perry for another season. And last year with the Brooklyn Nets, he produced not so great numbers, but honestly, he wasn't given that much of an opportunity looking at the per game. I mean, three points per game, not the best start, but I think it's a little bit more fair to look at the per 36 statistics because he only averaged just about eight minutes per game. But regardless, the assists, 0.5 assists per game, 2.8 rebounds per game. Shooting was 41% from the field, under 20% from three, and the free throw percentage. I mean, that's about league average there. But the per 36, you can kind of see what you're getting from this player. You want more of a double-double style of player because you get the 13.3 points per game, the 12.5 rebounds per game. This is over per 36. And the 2.4 assists per game, not really concerned about that. But, you know, as maybe not that impressing, that's a rookie season for a player who really didn't get a lot of time on an already stacked Brooklyn Nets team. Now, the reason he, we know that he has some talent is because of what he produced in his final season, his second season of college. In that season, this is, again, what got him drafted. 17.4 points per game, 10.1 rebounds per game. This is a double-double machine. He can get down and gritty on the boards and also knows how to put the ball in the basket. The assist, not really that much of a concern, but the 50% shooting percentage and a nice 32% shooting from three. He really started to find his jump shot in his final season of college. Maybe the Raptors are kind of seeing a play here that they can work with and get that shot back for the foreseeable future. Ultimately, if it doesn't really work out with the Raptors, then he can spend some time with nine. Five. He actually signed an Exhibit 10 contract, which means the Raptors can either bring him onto the team as a two-way player, 
or they can put him in the G League. So Reggie Perry is content to get some time with the G League. And now the G League means a lot more to me. Obviously, the G League is very important for the Raptors. The Raptors 905 system has produced some great talent for the team and is very good at helping harness the potential of players like Pascal Siakam, Fred Van Vliet, Norman Powell, just to name a few. I mean, Chris Boucher is a former G League MVP. So Chris Boucher also used the time in the G League to harness his skill set. So uh, it's not really an indictment against a player to be playing in the G League. I think Delano Banton will be there this season. And as somebody who plans on being at every single 905 home game, I'm excited to see what maybe Reggie Perry can produce. But does Reggie Perry have the skill set to make the Toronto Raptors roster? I think that there is a lot of competition for the places within the Raptors team. I mean, I made a video a couple weeks ago talking about those final few positions. I think there's basically, like we can say, there's three spots left, and you have a lot of players fighting for those positions. Like, I don't think Yuta Watanabe is guaranteed on the team. You also got to look at Freddie Gillespie, Isaac Bonga, Sam Decker, Ishmael Wainwright. And, you know, some of these guys have been proven to be solid. I mean, like participating NBA players in the past. Some of them have shown to be like Yuta Watanabe, like really good rotation players or solid rotation players in the past. So it's going to be difficult for somebody like Reggie Perry to really crack into the team. But again, training camp, we don't really see what goes on in training camp. It's up to the coaches to really understand what they can get out of the players. It's up to the, the front office and the coaching staff to see the players see who they can work with, and maybe somebody showcases a little bit extra that we weren't expecting for the season, and they can make the last little roster spot. It's going to come down to those fine margins, and it's going to come down to what the player can produce in those training camp games. But regardless, even if you don't make the final roster, you can play with the 905. Again, the Raptors 905 system is a very good system, so I don't think it's going to hurt a player to sign with the 905, play out the season with the 905, and harness their skills, especially for somebody like Reggie Perry, who is only 21 years old. And for somebody who is 21 years old, maybe part of his thinking when he signed for the Raptors was, if I don't make the roster... The 905 is a great spot for me to harness the talent and get to the next level. But the underlying factor about this signing, I mean, it's Reggie Perry. That, like, we're not trying to play him up like, like this is some phenomenal signing. It is what it is. It's Reggie Perry. We're going to deal with it as it is. But what this really showcases to me, I mean, like I said earlier in the video, if you told me the Raptors signed somebody yesterday and I didn't know who it was, I would just assume he's six foot eight, six foot nine with a seven one wingspan. That is exactly what the Raptors have been looking for the entire offseason. They have, you know, they They've drafted Scotty Barnes. They drafted Delano Banton. They brought in Isaac Bonga. They've now brought in Reggie Perry. It's nice to have someone like Ishmael Wainwright as well. You know, two-way guys with decent height can play on both sides of the ball, the positionless game. They also brought in Precious Achua. I mean, there's others I'm forgetting for sure. There's so many that they've brought in. They can make a full team, a full 10-man rotation of just guys who are like that height with that wingspan. Like OG and Obi's already here. Pascal Siakam's already here. It, we have a tell. We have a type. We have a tell. And this is what the Raptors are really focusing on. And it's really showing to me that this is the priority. And the front office and the coaches have a belief in place that this is the way of the future for the franchise to just load up on this style of player. We've never really seen a team like quadruple down essentially, on a game plan like this. We've seen the Rockets quadruple down on shooting, just all outside shooting, but we've never seen somebody quadruple down on like the two-way, six foot eight, six foot nine guys, positionless game, the switchability on defense. Because switchability hurt us last year. We didn't have a center who could go on the perimeter. Aaron Baines and Alex Len just completely destroyed a lot of the, the defensive systems that Nick Nurse had already set in place in previous seasons with the Raptors. So we are really kind of banking on this working, the positionless game. And even though, you know, it's just Reggie Perry. The fact that the Raptors have brought in so many guys like this to their team, it's showing to me that they just want to load up on all of these guys and try to get at least one of them, at least one of these types of players to pan out and join the team. If some of them don't, then you know, go to the 905, see if they can get to the NBA level. But if some of them do, wow. We just added in another guy who can play any position, who has the rotational ability on defense. We just added another one of those guys to our roster. So doubling down, tripling down, quadrupling down on this theory. Masai Jiri, Bobby Webster, Nick Nurse, whoever involved, must have this extreme level of confidence in this type of player being everywhere on the team. Because like, we can actually put out a team like this. You know, Scotty Barnes, a point guard, he's what, six foot eight, seven three, seven four wingspan. You could put somebody 
somebody, let's say, like Isaac Bonga in the other guard position, because those two, I mean, they have ball handling ability. Isaac Bonga is, is about the same, six foot eight, six foot nine, with seven one wingspan. OG and Anobi at small forward, Pascal Siakam at the power forward, and then you could toss in Ken Birch, but probably Precious Achua more so for the switchability in the center position. So you can put in a full scale lineup of players like that. I mean, there's more on the bench to choose from as well if you don't like any of those five. So the Raptors have the type. They have identified that this is how they are going to operate for the foreseeable future. Now, it's a little bit of an experimental phase, but what's good is we have time to experiment. The Raptors are walking into this season with a definitive lack of expectations simply because we're coming off of the season in Tampa Bay where things obviously did not quite go to plan. So we're entering this season without those expectations. If we missed the playoffs, sure, Raptors fans, we may be a little bit upset, but you know, it's not the be all end all if we don't make the playoffs because we're in a transition time. We are, you know, kind of retooling. We're trying to get this team better. So let's see what's going to work for us for the future. Let's pick out the right pieces of the puzzle to lay down the foundation for a possible future championship run. It's not going to happen this year but let's find those pieces so bringing in guys like reggie perry is just going to showcase can this system work the system where we have like five guys on the court who have the same tendencies the same two-way ability the same length all together i'm excited to see how all this can pan out during the season but time will tell about everything regardless reggie perry solid pickup let's see what you can do in training camp if not he'll have fun with the 905 so let me know all of your thoughts and opinions on Reggie Perry, the way the raps are going, and everything I said in this video in the comments down below because that wraps up for me for today. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you are still here, be sure to hit that like button. If you did enjoy, it really goes a long way to helping support the channel with that YouTube algorithm, bringing in new viewers to the channel. Let's try to get this video to, let's get to 250 likes today, please. Also, subscribe to this channel on a road to 7,000 subscribers. You can help us get to that big Kyle Lowry number checkpoint by subscribing to this channel for more Raptors videos. The link Links around me right now, the other channels we have, amateur clips, the best Twitch highlights. We also stream live on Twitch three times a week, including tomorrow, 7:30 p.m. Eastern time. Also, amateur TV for vlogs, Raptors fan interviews. We may mesh that channel with this channel, but that's another thing. Plus, at the end of the day, I believe what I say. If you disagree, that is okay. We'll see you again next time for another video.